Isn't it good just to testify about the goodness of God? Years ago, we've been doing this long here, it's just old hat, Joe, but it's something that a lot of places have taken out. And uh, I believe it brings glory to God. I believe it's something you just got to slow down. You know, the word, but your testimony, how, how many have been encouraged by somebody else's testimony? Nobody knew what you were going through. And somebody started testifying about how God seen them through and encouraged you in that moment. Yeah. I mean, Amen. that's what the body of Christ is about to encourage and uplift, to exhort one another. And, you know, iron sharpens iron. Become better disciples of Christ, to look and act more like Christ, amen, and to love one another, and to pick each other up when you're when you're hurting, when you're broken, when 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 you don't know which way to go, you should have somebody in Christ that's going to come over and go, come on, come this way. I've been there. It's going to be all right. You know that's the reason why the Bible says before you go and rebuke someone, you better before you go to. It says everybody likes to quote that scripture uh, that uh, you know to go. Uh, better to have a log in your eye than a splinter in the other. I get it mixed up right now this morning. But the point of it is when it goes on down, it says you better have ta already taken it out of your eye before you go correct somebody else. And the point is, you know what happens when you take it, when you deal with it yourself? You have something called compassion. You have something called empathy because you understand what that person's going through. And instead of going up and smacking them in the head and saying, and having some religious spirit, you go up and you say, listen, brother, I see you're struggling here. And, you know, and I'm like, sin, it does the whole, the sexual sins, things like that, they destroy the whole body. There's other sins that really destroy a life. And, you know, and most people in the rooms probably overcame some of those kind of things at one point in time or the other, but for so long, religious spirits said you can't talk about it. Come on. But I believe the body of Christ is in a time when we need to go and say, hey, listen, and listen, you don't cast your pearls before swine. If that person is going to turn and rend you, you need to do it under the unction of the Holy Ghost, not sharing your stuff with just anybody. And then you need to come and say, listen, I've been there. There's a way out. Let me give you some nuggets that's going to help you. How many know, how many know some of the elders in the church uh, got, a, got a corrected because they weren't teaching any, some of the younger? How many believe some of our younger people in society could use some help? Right now, the enemy is working overtime to pit the society against everybody, whether it's race or age or moral compass or all those things. The enemy is working overtime to get us to poise against them. But how many know if you're really a true believer in Christ, you've been set free and delivered, everybody can usually remember or associate where one of those people came from and why they're thinking the way they're thinking. Instead of getting upset and angry, it's time for the church to get back on mission. The mission is He came to seek and save the lost, who I was once chief of. And so it's time for the church to take the anointing that God's given them and stop bickering, moaning, complaining, and looking like total fools in the world's eyes and start getting back to the main thing. And that is to seek and save the lost. You'll say, well, preacher, I'm here. Why are you getting on me? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Ask the Holy Ghost. He told me to preach. Amen. Amen. You need to hear it. Come on, listen. The Bible says, he told Timothy, when you start getting cold, how many know when you get cold, you start bickering and moaning? Things start rubbing you. Look, our eyes, it isn't just me. <laughs> Things start rubbing you the wrong way. Things start getting under your skin. Listen, I know when I need to go get in the presence of God, and so does my wife. <laughs> She'll even encourage me, honey. <laughs> you need to go pray. But he said, lay your hands on yourself, stirring up the gifts of God that God has put in you. And so you need to be able to be still uh, tender and hearing the Holy Spirit enough to realize when you're getting out of sorts and out of the character of Christ. Because it's not an if, it's a when. We're human. Come on. I'm not talking about habitual sin. I'm talking about just, you know, how, how, listen. Listen. In today's society, you would have to be just dead for things, something not to be bothering you right now. I mean, you can't go out to eat, you can't do this, you can't do that. Everything you believe in is under attack. You see this atrocity going over here. You see this atrocity going on over there. And you're like, oh God, I can have an opinion. But if your opinion steals the joy of God, if it takes away from the mission of Christ, then who is hindering you? The Bible says when you run the race, who hindered you? 
Well, I believe that is Satan. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. And if he can get your focus on all these things, he's stealing the mission that God made for you, the plan that God had for you. Now listen, that one of those plans is souls. One of those plans is people. The field, I believe there's, there's souls out there that someday as pastor, I want to give an account if we don't get them in this church. I believe there's people that's going to die and go to hell if we don't accomplish the vision that God has for us. I believe there's people in your life that God has assigned for you. And listen, they're not probably going to want to talk about God the first thing. They're going to want to talk about how everything's wrong and what this one did and my opinion on that. And if you engage in that, you've just now engaged with the enemy. And the proverb says you're a fool. Listen, everybody wants to do it. Do I like all the stuff going on? Of course not. Would I like to go even just simply go out to eat? Of course I would. I'm on a diet. I only get to go out once a week. <laughs> Come on now. Some of you might say, I need some word for that. So I gave you the sheets. You got about four pages. <laughs> Let's read some words this morning, amen? Do a little reading here. If you can, I, they came out smaller on yours than I intended. Do all good things, Philippians 2.14, do all good things without murmuring and disputing. Is that what it says? All things. All things. Is that just uh, things that make you happy? No. Things you enjoy doing. <laughs> things that bring you pleasure. Come on now. Let's be honest with you. Listen, there's not a person in this room that on a weekly basis probably doesn't have to control their spirit from doing some type of mummering and disputing. Mm -hmm. Your husband didn't put back the toothpaste thing where it belonged. <laughs> Something's out of order in the house. Philippians 2.14. Are you with me? Yes. Something just... But he said, do all things without murmuring I mean, and disputing. I'm here to tell you, you can only do that through the power of the Holy Ghost. I mean, you can try to religious yourself into it, but you're going to be more miserable, and everybody around you will be more miserable than you are. But by the grace of God, His unmerited favor that causes you to overcome, come on, he, the word also means to empower you to overcome. That's what His grace does. In, in your weakness, His grace is sufficient for you, right? It means He empowers you to change. Isn't that good? You can look it up. It's in there. And so, you know, but sometimes you're going to catch yourself, and I believe as the, we're living in the last days, and, and the Bible says that men will be lo uh, lovers of flesh, and evil will be called good, and evil, good, evil. And I believe we're living in that season. I believe we're coming into that where it's going to get darker around us, but God told us this is the greatest time to be alive as believers because His light's going to shine even brighter. But let me tell you, if your wick's dim from acting like the world and mummering, disputing, and complaining, you're not going to be shining bright. And the church needs to wake back up. How many remember about three weeks ago, I guess, or so? I don't remember the exact time. I just remember Brother Kevin was with us. And the Holy Spirit under unction in the worship service, we, we broke that spirit. Of I'm not saying it was just us, but we broke that thing. We woke the church up. How many can see in just a few weeks the difference in our world? Amen. Nobody knows what happened here. But there was a body of believers that gathered under the unction of the Holy Ghost and declared some things. And now we see a change, right? Now, listen, you say, well, 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 you can see the world where just a few people got together and God used them to shift things. So, so it's like, what am I supposed to do? You're supposed to light yourself on fire so the whole world comes to watch you burn. You're supposed to get so full of the Holy Ghost that everybody thinks you're crazy. That you'll become <laughs> contagious, full of hope and joy and peace. But if you're concentrating on all the stuff that should be, could be, mummering and complaining and disputing, you're sitting there with a wet blanket on yourself and on everybody around you. And then you become what I call a joy sucker. <laughs> you come in, you plug into me, and you start sucking my joy. <laughs> and i got to go get filled back up some more. And then you're like, I feel better when I'm around, Pastor. I know, go get down. <laughs> no, I don't feel that. <laughs> Not all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but he says, do all things without mummering and blamings, that you may be blameless and harmless. 
Listen, we need to be blameless and harmless. Now listen, that doesn't mean people's not going to blame you for things. That doesn't mean you're going to be accused of things. You have the accuser of the brethren. Someone's always going to be accusing you of something. I hate to break that to you. Someone's always going to be saying something, trying to stir drama. Yeah. But you need to know in your heart that your hands are clean. And your heart is clean. If you know that, then God is going to right the ship. Because His Word promises. Amen? So, but He's saying if you're murmuring and complaining, you're not harmless or blameless. Everybody see that? Does that kind of rattle your cage? The Holy Spirit just blew this up to me this week. It's like, whoosh. it's not new, but how many know that? And by the way, you say, we're, Pastor, we're living in unprecedented times. I'm here to tell you, the Bible said there's nothing new under the sun. And I believe we, the Christian, the body of, of Christ, the church, has seen some difficult times. Where anybody studied the Dark Ages? Anybody ever read a Fox's Book of Martyrs? <clears throat> They all suffered some things. There's been over and over through Christ and what God has expected from His church has never changed. Now, but he, we're living in a time with social influence, TV, and stuff that's, that, is, that is unprecedented where your mind can become uh, flooded with all this junk. And the Bible says, you know, what's in the, what's in the heart comes out the mouth. And before it gets in the heart, it's in your head. And it goes, and then it goes down, 18 inches. Then it starts coming back out. So if you're talking with someone, guess what? It's already made the full digestive tract. It's already went from your head into your heart, and now it's coming back out your mouth. So, and, but it starts, you know, uh, the Job, I believe, was one that made a covenant with his eyes that he went out sin against God. And most people think about that's just women, but I believe in this day and time, we need to also watch what we're taking in. Yeah. You know. And I have all kinds of stuff, but I, you know, I've learned to scroll. Mm -hmm. I've learned that I don't have to engage everyone. I don't have to talk to everyone. And so I'm not saying, you know, there's not times to to stand up for God, but I don't have to engage everyone that just wants to argue to be arguing. Amen. My peace is worth more than that to me. But I am tempted. I am human. And there's times when I would like to tell them what I think. There's times I would like to enlighten them. They just you know, think they're so smart. Most of the time, I, I play dumb really well, so most of the time people think I'm just a bumbling idiot hillbilly. Sometimes, most of the time, I'm okay with them thinking that. But I have this flesh guy that I'm keeping on reps. I'm feeding the spirit man more, so when the spirit man starts to... I go ahead and... It ain't worth it. Come on, are you with me? But I believe the church has been sucked into, including us, being fed up with the, the way the world is going right now, the way things are going. And we have every right to be fed up, but we cannot get off mission. The main thing is still the main thing. He came to seek and save the lost. And if we're causing a disconnect between us and those that need Christ, we're not on mission. We need to find, keep finding ways to bridge the gap. I'm not talking about, I, I, I get all kinds of stuff. I, I've got some in the Muslim Brotherhood here in Springfield. They're just sending me all this stuff about how Jesus and Islam is the same and all this crazy stuff. And you all know how Pastor feels like about that. And so I know that's going to happen. But... I thought, hey, if they can send me stuff and I'm a target, I can send them some stuff back. <laughs> so I did, and then they decided they didn't want to communicate no more after a little bit. <laughs> but I wasn't upset, and I was trying to bridge the gap. I thought, if they want to reach across the table, it's a two-way street. How many know we need to find a way? I'm so thankful for broken change. We got people from every every uh, nationality, every every uh, pay range, every different different cultures. We, we just wrap up there, we're we're just a whole big uh, pot of America. I, I, I want to think, but but that's not right. I, I, I can't think of the right word right now, so I'm in trouble. Uh, Heinz 57. Heinz 57. But we're the body of Christ. Nobody here sees any of those things. We just see brothers and sisters in the Lord that need one another. Amen. Amen. 
We're missing a bunch this morning, but I, I can tell everybody here their hearts on them. You know, how many how many's already taken a, t a tally of who's not here and started praying? Same with me. And you know, some of you praying that God might have fired her pants this morning. <laughs> you know? Never forget Sister Renee years ago when I first started coming back to the church. I was working 16 hours a day, and uh, this wasn't it when I was in ministry. I missed a couple of Sundays because I'd overslept because I was just so tired. Exhausted. She said, Brian, where were you? I said, Well, sister, means I'm so tired. I just thought I was going to slip right through my arm. She said, Okay. She said, Well, did you want to come to church? I said, Well, of course I did. She said, Okay, I can take care of that. That's all she said. Next morning, the next Sunday, I woke up and it felt like my bed was on fire and I had somebody stabbing me in the back. and. I got to church and she smiled and she said, oh, it's good to see you. This went on for like a couple of Sundays. And, that, and I said, hey, what's going on? She said, well, I prayed that your bed would be like you lay on a bed of nails and it would be on fire. It hasn't worked for I said, I think I can hear the alarm now. <laughs> but do you see that she reached across instead of scolding me she reached across and bridged the gap and encouraged me to come up. That may sound simple, but that still works today. Amen. And somebody did that for you on many levels, I'm sure, in your years as a, as a believer. Amen? Amen? There's all this talk. I get stuff all... I'm bombarded 24, especially with COVID and everything else and how to deal and how to cross and how to pastor how to deal with millenniums and how, how to deal with this and how to deal with that. You don't think Jesus and Paul and all of them had stuff? How many thinks the gospel still works? Do you want to know what's missing? I'm going to go ahead and get ahead of my message a little bit. What's missing is the power and the fire of the Spirit of God. We have that here. But the Bible says that you are to go about to the highways and byways and compel them to come. That word compel is an action word. And the Bible says He will confirm His Word with signs and words following. Do you know what? If you're mummering, complaining, and you start getting... It's easy to strike up a conversation right now with somebody because everybody's upset about something. <laughs> but nobody wants to talk to me very long sometimes. You know, they'll call me and I'll say, How are you doing? Well, you know what? I, uh, I'll say, I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you doing? Well, I had a preacher friend he said, you really changed me doing that. He said, but don't you have bad days? I said, I'm, having, I'm dealing with this, this, and this, but it doesn't change the Word of God. Amen. Whether I see it, whether I feel it, the Bible says I'm blessed and highly favored. I don't see how God is working it out, but He's working it out for my good. Or maybe sometimes He's working on my character. Amen. Sometimes he's just saying, boy, enough is enough. I took the sandpaper. I took all the other stuff. Now i got the chainsaw out. Me and you's going to town. I know nobody's been there, right? Come on. But we don't want to talk about it to nobody else. We don't want to say that, you know. Well, God's been working on me for 20 years, and I, you know. But it's time to be the church. It's time to be back on mission. You have to ask yourself, what have I been saying? What have I been speaking? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you're going you're gonna to eat what you're saying. That's what's going to spiritually feed you. And right now, you, you, uh, I don't believe there's an individual on the planet that hasn't been sucked into something between COVID and all the other stuff that's going on. But listen, it's time for the church to arise. It's time for us to... How many believe that you could impact somebody this week and get them to church next Sunday or get them saved, get them to a church? How many, or even more, even the, how many believe you can reach across and give somebody hope? The Bible says, always be ready to give an answer for the hope that is inside you. But if you've been, you're, if you've been all jacked up, you're not even in touch with your own hope. And you've got to stir yourself up to get your hope going. And all of a sudden you get on that faith train. Woo! And you're so ready to share something. But you know what? The Word works even if you don't feel it. What if you got up late for work? The enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. And he set his sights on you for that day. And you overslept. The car didn't start. 
You relate your own work, you say, blessed, how am I blessed? Well, you listen, you're blessed in the middle of all those things. And you get to work, and that co-worker has been watching you for six months. Says, how are you doing? Well, I just had a rough morning. Oh, old devil's been after me. I'm going to say, where is this God you've been talking about for six months? Now listen, it's not sin. It's not going to send you to hell. But it is going to start leaving a bad taste in your spirit. And it's going to grow some stuff, some fruit you don't want. Come on, are you with me? How many believe the world? Listen, when I was lost, I just wanted to see some people really living. Listen, I, people in the world, they want to see the power of God. They want to see you know, some of the greatest power of God is, is in a season like we're in, being able to have love, hope, and give peace. God still wants to do the other. He wants to grow legs and do all those things. But even Jesus said, what's greater for me to save a man's soul or to, or to heal a body? The greatest thing is to save the soul. How many want to see some souls saved? Amen. How many is ready to just see the world changed? Amen. How many could use a, a shot of the Holy Ghost this morning to light you back on fire? Yes. I believe God's here to do that this morning. I haven't even gotten my first scripture yet. Let me get there. But He tells us in this verse how the church is to respond during a season like this. Let's look real quick before I get ahead of myself. That you may be blameless and harmless to sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Holding forth the word of God that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So he wants us to be blameless, harmless, without rebuke. How many know we're living in a crooked and perverse nation? But he wants us to be shine forth as lights. How many want to be a light? Amen. How many are honest that you probably need to repent for mumbling and complaining? Yes. A few. A few honest ones. The rest of you, I pray the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Some of you say, I wish you'd hurry up and get done. See, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> let's look at the passion translation here real quick my beloved ones just like you've always listened to everything I've taught you in the past I'm asking you now to keep following my instructions as though I was I was right there with you now you must continue to make this new life fully manifested as you live in the holy awe of God which brings you trembling into his presence how many are ready to be brought into the awe of God, trembling into His presence. How many enjoyed that this morning? How many believe you're still in it? Amen. God will continually revitalize you. How many know that the Spirit of God is the, the, the being filled with the Holy Ghost? It's a living water. And the Bible says there's times of refreshing. You know, God will revive. Rev uh, Romans 15, 13, my favorite verse, says He'll fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. How I many you know that God, it, so it's it's there anytime you need it. You know, he said, I know there's going to be times that you need revitalized, and that's what the church is called revival forever. Except for they've been looking for the big shock and all instead of the body of Christ to get off their duff and out of the pew and start being the light of the world. Come on, I'm not trying to preach that way. I am just love me anyways, I guess. <laughs> But He wants to revitalize you and planting within you the passion to do what pleases you. And the Bible says to renew your, to your first love again. Amen? Hebrews 6, 6, it talks about right there, Hebrews chapter 6, it talks about renewing, if you've fallen away, to renew your first love again. How, and there's a couple other verses. How many know you can feel when your fire starts to go out? And sometimes it's simply just coming to church and You've already repented first in John 1 9 and he's faithful just to forgive you just letting God fill you up but how many know sometimes that's just enough to sustain you I believe God wants us to be so full that we can go and share it wherever we go but in order to do that we're going to have to learn to watch our mouths we're going to have to learn to watch what we're saying how we're saying it how we're treating other people there's times I'm going to tell you I just know I've got to shut up there's times I know that I just can't say nothing 
just better keep my mouth shut. Blessings. Sorry you feel that way. I really I don't even get to say that one no more because the Holy Ghost says you know that's a two-handed backslide. <laughs> so I don't even get to say that these days. Come on, are you, are you but are you seeing how the word he didn't leave us to wonder how we should act during this season? Come on, are you I was just to, I, I knew these things, but God put it fresh in my spirit this morning. He said, This is what actually not just this morning, all this week, he said, This is what I want for my church in these last days. He, see, your attitude determines your altitude. And it's not just, so for so long, that just meant, oh, how high I can get in the presence of God. Listen, God wants you so full of the glory of God, so you will be a soul winner. So that signs and wonders are following you. People will go around going, you know, Stephen, before he ever got into ministry, they found him full of the glory of God before he got to be head table waiter. God is looking for some people today, but He's having a hard, hard time finding it in the church that are full of the glory and they don't want to be head table waiters. They want to go right into something else. I'm not saying that's you. Come on, are you with me? I didn't like to preach on that. Live a cheerful life. How many want to live a cheerful life? You ever been around somebody that's just a fun sucker? I mean, you get around them and it's just like... <laughs> and if you ain't careful before long, you're starting to comment on what they're commenting about. Yeah, I hear you. You should have been going, I'm not hearing you. Sometimes you want, I want to stick my fingers in No, 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 I just take, I actually I take a floor to go in Jesus' name. <laughs> Somehow it's all the things feel like I need to move on. I don't know. Live a cheerful life without complaining or division among yourselves. Now, I just want to point out something here. I'm, I know I'm... He's not talking to the world here. He's talking to the church. The church has never been more divided. And he's not just talking to broken chains, he's talking to the church, the body of Christ. It's never been more divided than it is now. You know, I won't move on Jesus. I won't move that Jesus is the only way to heaven. I'm not going to move on that. That's just something we have a whole doctrine. You can read on our website of what we believe. You know, believe in the filling of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and all those things. But you know, if somebody doesn't believe that, but they've made Jesus Lord of their life. I don't have to convince them or argue with them. If I live it out in front of them and I've got the fruit in my life, you know what I've seen over and over again? People start coming up and going, hey, can I have some of what you've got? Yeah. Speaking of that, I'll tell the story if it's okay. I'll never forget when Brother Darren got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Sister Bacon's husband, he wanted to be the Lord now. He was taller than me. I think he was bigger than me in every area. We were having a Bible study at my house. I was sitting in the couch. I didn't want to preach no more. I was just trying to be kind of done. I was just having a Bible study with my pastor. But I was still sharing the Word. I was still ministering every week. I was traveling. I was just hurt. And God was using it, flowing in my life still. I had my heart right. I wasn't being bitter. So I'm preaching about that. And he came around for just three or four times, wasn't he? Yeah, and, and everybody told me he hated preachers. He, to beat some up, we'd go to church, despise church, and, and all that. So I gave the altar call this one night, and people were just getting slain in the Holy Ghost, and the glory of God was falling strong and getting saved. And he's probably from here to where Sister Bonnie is at. And he just jumps up and he's coming at me at a dead run. And I didn't know whether to get out of the way, get ready to fight, or what. And I'm like, Lord, what do I do? He said, You stand. So I just stood still. It is so glad I wasn't like the preachers all today, ready with all the high. Most preachers probably would have pulled out a 357 or something at that time. <laughs> Bodyguards jump in. And he come up and, and tears in his eyes. And he wasn't a man that cried very often. He said, I, he said, whatever you got, I want it. I said, you want Jesus? He said, yes. And that Holy Ghost said, you keep talking about it. And so he got saved, and I laid my hands on him. And this ain't no lie. That's the only time I've ever seen this in all my years in ministry. He literally flew through the air 
from where I was at back to where he was at, just by that far. And they hit the couch and slumped down. And he was down there for about, I don't know, it was a long time. I don't I don't know how long. I'm not doing time, an hour, or 45 minutes. I don't know. Anyways, but I do remember when he came to, it was hilarious. He was all staggering under the anointing. <laughs> He'd never felt that. He said, he said, I, he was just he was as serious as he he said, I feel drunk. Is that okay? <laughs> we said, yeah, man, that's that's the Holy Ghost. He decided he liked that stuff. <laughs> he was there all the way till God called. He was here all the way till God called him home. Amen. I'm not bragging on me, but listen, that's for every believer, not just pastors. Did you know that? Right. The end of Matthew, the end of Mark. Each time he said, "Let captivity captive." He gave gifts unto men, and he charged us the Great Commission to go into the highways and byways and compel them to come. And he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the earth. So how many of you get filled with the Holy Ghost? He's to go with you. But I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Ghost is a gentleman, but he don't hang around with no trash. And when you start getting your flesh man built up, he starts, uh, you don't have enough room for him, and he don't, he don't want to go on. You're going to have to get the house cleaned back. And, you know, for years, for someone that fell away, I'm not proud of that time when I was a young man. But the Bible says the gifts of God are without repentance. That's why there's false doctrines and things, because people once had it, they lost it, and they got familiar spirits working in them and operating through some of that, because people think it's real. It's a whole other lesson. But God may not uh, take away the gift, but the anointing is the fuel that fires. The anointing comes from keeping your vessel clean, right? And some of the things that we may be dealing with as a body of believers during this time may not seem that big to some things you've overcame. But they will still pollute your gas, your anointing enough that your engine ain't going to fire correctly. Come on. Or it, maybe you, know, you ever started an engine that it ran but it just didn't run good? <laughs> Sometimes as believers that's what we're like because our fuel is a little polluted. And how many know whenever you go to see somebody, somebody wants to show you something, they want to see the engine run, you want to see that thing purr, man. You want to see it boom. Somebody really built this in here. Do a little candle. I digress. I'm way off target. Let's go back. <laughs> Lord help. So revitalize you to passion, deliver cheerful life, and uh, without complaining or division among yourselves, so that means that I can't engage with... Listen, I'm going to tell you, church, uh, somebody's always going to have something to say about your church and how you believe and everything else, but you don't have to argue with them. Now, there's a difference between somebody asking genuine questions and you can going to agree to disagree and explaining what you believe and someone that's, that you can... Listen, and then somebody, the only thing is they're in it is to change your mind. Moving along. And... Well, I just quit on that. <laughs> Glory. Pure children of God, even though you live in the midst of a brutal and perverse culture, for you will appear among them as shining lights in the universe. How many know we're living in a perverse culture? Well, I got plenty of time. Perverse culture. But, you know. Isn't it easy to think that God, we're in a time like there's never been before. We're in the last days. But, you know, over in uh, Solomon, he, he said that, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. So, there's nothing new. And then like, we look back at all the things the church went Has anybody showed up at your house yet to tell you they're going to they're gonna cut your head off, they're going to crucify you? You know, Peter and John, they told them to quit preaching let them back out, and they went right back out and did it again. Didn't they? Well, God's called us to be lights. But lights that, that emulate Him, full of love, joy, peace, meekness, temperance. I don't always get all those all right. That's why I need the Savior. That's why I need the anointing inside me that constrains me, that causes me to act right. How about you? Moving along real quick. You can read the next one at home. 
Uh, Psalms 1914, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. There's another verse as the Bible talks about every idle word you say, you're going to be judged. If you had to have someone to follow you around with a tape recorder of what you've been saying for the last two months, playing it back to you, how happy would you be? You say, well, that's under the blood, Pastor. Praise God that we have that opportunity. But you put seeds in the ground, whether you want to admit it or not, that's in other people's lives they are going to come to fruition, whether it's good or bad. Come on, are you with me? Listen, I've had to eat a lot of crow in my life. Maybe it's just me. This is something God's blown up to me. And if I realize I've done something, I've apologized to so many people in the last few years especially. And they're like, Pastor, you don't have to apologize about it. You didn't do nothing. I'm like, I'm glad you see it that way, but I don't. And I've been, also been around long enough to know that if I hadn't done that, a seed would have grown from it. It would have been destructive in your life. Right? Now, if I was to ask you how many, what you thought on all the political things going on in the world and all the moral compasses, do you know even in this small body we wouldn't all agree? But how many believe that Jesus is the only way? Amen. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. Come on, are you with me? Yes. How many are ready to be the light? The Bible says let your grace be seasoned with salt. You know, if you get just, just enough salt on a piece of meat or something, smoking it, grilling it, whatever, it comes out delicious. But you ever put too much seasoning on there? You can't get that out of your mouth fast enough, can you? That's what it's like when believers try to put too much religiosity and all the constraints on people and shove what they believe instead of just seasoning enough to make it taste good to give them a little taste of the flavor to come on in. Come on, are you with me? Now, right now, we people have been out of it. Church, no church, mass, no mass. Uh, COVID's a conspiracy. COVID's not the biggest thing or not. COVID's stupid. I'm not going to abide by it. You know, we're not even going to get into all the other atrocities going on in the world. And you say, why not address them? Well, because all souls matter to Jesus. Everybody's a soul. I love them the same. Can I say everybody's been treated equally? Absolutely not. Is there atrocities? Yes. But, there, but there's a lot of things in a lot of people's lives that nobody knows. But though I do know one thing, that Jesus came to seek and save the lost, and I ain't leaving nobody behind. And I'm going to go after everybody the same way that I go. It doesn't. There's no. There's none to me that there's somebody that needs Jesus. And if we get back to doing that, there's nothing that stands in our way. You with me? Yeah. <coughs> I forgot to tell everybody, if you don't like the temperature here, you sit in different pews. Some of them are, some of them are frigid and some of them are hot. So. The air is according to the air and the heat here is according to your position in the room. I'm about to wrap up. How many know it's still a go ye gospel? How many think it's time to forget about COVID? How many thinks it knows it's time to forget about every other political thing? going on. Listen, I believe in the seven mountains. I believe Christians should be involved in politics. I believe Christians should be involved in all those things. And there should be a Christian influence at it. But before all of those things, I believe that Jesus is Lord and He sent us into the, He sent every believer into the world as a flaming fire to be a sword used for Him. Maybe I don't believe the same way that maybe. Maybe I should not use that word seven mountains. It's something God gave me years ago. I know some other people have some teaching on it out. Maybe I should be careful. What did I say? I mean, remember I taught on that something many years ago. I've got one, two now. All right. Glory. Mark 16, 14. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as he sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardest heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. What? He went to the eleven and he didn't beat them up for their unbelief and hardness. Is that what we do today? Where are you at? Well, I just got, I'm tired of that place. I ain't seeing nothing there. 
Bless you, God. Oh, man, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'll be praying for you. I love you. God is greater than those things. Is there anything in particular I can pray for? Do you, what's the root of this thing that you're so upset about? You could be surprised how simple it is sometimes, but just loving enough to pray for somebody can break something. But you know what most people do? They jump in the boat and they share their offense with this offense, and they get, then their root of bitterness comes out, and everybody's more upset. Come on, are you with me? But isn't it time to be back to being a church? Listen, I know we've heard this before, but I just feel like God's saying, and I don't believe those are those people are going to be listening online. It's time to recalibrate. It's time to just, just I feel like just a shedding of the skin this morning. Just going, it's enough. I'm finished with all that stuff. I'm getting back on mission. You know, when the military gets sent out, they have to stay on mission. All kinds of things, the parameters change around them all the time. They have to adapt and overcome. But they stay on mission. I believe that is what God is looking for in these last days, some green berets that are glory carriers that can adapt and overcome, but they're going to learn to stay on mission. And you're going to be tempted to mummer and complain. You're going to be tempted. Things are going to bother you. And you're going to mess up and you're going to get sucked up into some things. But guess what? That's what 1 John 1 9 is. He's faithful just to forgive you all your sins and wash you clean of all unrighteousness. And if you caught yourself, that means the Word's working. It, that's good news. Right? And by the way, you don't have to always go around going, oh, am I going to mess up? If you start chasing God and you start start filtering what comes in your mind, you'll start filtering what comes in your heart. Before long, it just become part of who you are. And when something gets out of check, you'll feel a real deep hurt. You go, I don't better not do that. But here lately, I believe for the last few months, the body of Christ has been under such an attack. He's wore a lot of people down. And so it's, they've been starting to easily slip into some things because they've been under pressure for so long kind of like boiling a crab or something. <laughs> they don't know to get out of the pot. And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now listen, these are guys that their hearts are all jacked up that he's commissioning. Today, before we'll come, do ordain somebody, myself included. Boy, they got to have four years of this and sit under this and learn this and learn that. But how many know God? God just He saw their He saw the promise in their life. How many know He still sees the future in you? He sees the callings on your life. And he's still telling you to go. And if you'll go, I can tell you what I'm a much better man than I was when I first got into ministry, and I'm still improving every day because I'm still going. And I pray to be even better next year. And the year after that. And the year after that. Move along. And he that believeth is baptized shall be saved. And he believeth not shall be damned. How many don't think, listen, I ain't talking about beating people up. But how many don't think people in the world needs to know that there is a heaven to gain and there is a soul you're going to lose that goes to heaven? Now, when I was running from the world, I had lots of preachers try to tell me that. I'd laugh at them and tell me, yeah, well, you'd be shocked because you'd probably be there with me. I was a mess. But when I came back to God, one thing nobody ever told me about was the love of God. I was like, why didn't anybody ever tell me about this? Why didn't anybody tell me how good it felt not to have all that? I didn't care if I was going to hell. I was going to have fun for a little while. Ain't that horrible? But do you know what? When I... When you start seeing, when I come to the end of myself, I remember the people who walked the walk and talked the talk. I remember the people who, who didn't change. I remember the people that had the anointing. And when I needed prayer, that I showed up at their door going, Hey, hi, how you doing? Do you pray for me? So many times when you'll say, Well, I've been doing this for years and I ain't seen no fruit. Well, hold the line. It's coming. But maybe you need to also stir the pot. Maybe you need to fan the flames. Or maybe you were like me even a few weeks ago. I realized that I was getting sucked into some of this a few weeks ago. I said, Lord, forgive me. I'm, I'm removing myself from this thing. And I have. I have. I stepped back and I said, you know what? They can all engage. I'm not going to engage in that. I'm going I'm to get back on mission.
And these signs shall follow them that believe. Does it say may? I know I preach this a lot. I teach in Bible school all the time around. But does it say they may follow them? Somebody, listen, I know it's going along. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor and say, shall. 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 It doesn't say, now listen, if you really believe that, what would you do different when you left here today? When that person walked up to you, moaning, groaning, complaining, or the one here or there, you know, somebody just said, silver and gold. How many would like to, you know, Peter didn't even have to say, he got to a point, he didn't even have to say silver and gold have I none. He just shadow just walked by and started healing people. I mean, believe he had to live in such a way he had a lot of anointing in But listen, he's talking to every believer. He says, what did, the moment you get saved, if you will go, God is going to confirm his what? Word. So you kind of need to know some word, don't you? And when you confirm his word, what's going to follow you? So what are you going to do different Monday morning? Is it just going to be another feel-good message? Pastor, encourage me. I'm going to change how I talk. I'm going to get back into blessing land. Or are you going to say, you know what? I'm actually going to get on mission. I'm looking for souls and I'm, I'm counting heads and I, I, I'm going to walk in the authority God gave me and I'm going to start doing some things. I don't feel good today. Would you like prayer? I'm having a rough time. Come on, let me pray about it. Come on. Are you going to do something? Are you going to change your atmosphere? Because the church has become one big thermostat, and, uh, one, one big thermometer, and we need to be the thermostat. Everybody can tell you the culture of the world. They're trying to tell you, this is how you react to this temperature. And God is saying, I put you in a world to change the temperature. And when you walk in the room, you just say, I don't like it in here. It's too cold or it's too hot. And you people are all jacked up. That's why he said, he told them, when you come in, you put your peace on the house. And if they don't receive it, you take it back. But most of the time as believers, we're not putting anything down. We're just feeling what's in the room and saying, I'm spiritual. I can feel what's in here. And God is saying, put your peace down. Yeah. Take authority. Every place you've stepped your foot. That ain't just for pastor. That's for every one of you. When you hit the streets today, tomorrow, the day after that. You know, when you go in the store, nobody wants to get close to you because you ain't wearing your mask. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be getting all upset with them and high and fluke and thinking you're more spiritual than them. Bless God if they just had some faith. Man, they don't even know what faith is. Well, they've been going to church for 20 years. I don't give a rip. Well, let's just come on now. The Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. And that doesn't mean you can know them so you can mark them to be something, some fake or phony. That means they're marked as a soul that needs saved and you better keep a relationship with them because they might come to the end of the rope someday and they're going to come looking at you because you had signs and wonders following you and they're going to say they got something I need! <coughs> How many are ready for somebody to come up asking you for to give an account of the hope that's in you. How many of that? that means they're seeing something in your life. Yeah. I do believe I'm, I'm about to wrap up. I'm going to give an altar call this morning. And uh, if you need to light your fire again, God's going to do that. But then you're going to be responsible for fanning the flame. You can get filled up this morning. You can be empty by nightfall. Come on. And one of the ways not to be get empty is to be honest with yourself about how you've been acting. Listen, I'm not here to beat on you this morning. When God gave me this message, I said, Lord, that's fine. 
but I don't think it's the right season for me telling God this, if you can imagine. I'm like, I don't think it's the right season. To, I don't want to be beating on people. He said, you ain't beating on people. And I skipped the message. <laughs> I think you would have to be dead for what's going on around us not to affect you right now. I think that you would have to have no emotions at all for this not to affect you. Listen, I have peace. I have those things you say. The pastor, you're telling me, yeah, it's not affecting me on that level, but for not re to realize that without the power of Christ in my life, how I would feel, that'd be naive, wouldn't it? But with Christ, I can stay in peace. I don't have to let it go. I've got the joy, right? Y'all with me? But, you know, and while I'm, while I'm stirring the pot, Believers shouldn't be calling no names. I, I have had it. Now this is for somebody online. I've had it up to here. The Lord's had it up to here with all the libertards and demo craps and all the other <laughs> stupid name calling and what they call conservatives and what you call this one and what you call that one. The Bible says that your mouth and your speech should edify Christ. How in the world? And he said that, that salt and fresh water should not mix. So how in the world can you just tell them, Jesus, I love you, and Jesus loves you, and come on over here, he can deliver you from these things, and one minute you'll call him some horrible name. That ain't the body, that isn't Jesus. I Listen, and I'm not condoning what they do. They're doing some horrible things They're all over the country. There's horrible things going on that's pure demonic. But listen, we have power to pulling down strongholds. But we can't do that if we're sucked in at a, at, a, at, a, at a foot level when we're supposed to be seated up high in heavenly places. And the enemy sucked us in down here and we're just going back and forth with trash. And that's not our place. It's not the church's place. It's not our place as believers. You say, well, Pastor, we're doing it. There's only a few here this morning. Well, I believe a few can change the world. I believe you can go and you can change the atmosphere in your area. I believe you can. I, I believe God is making a spiritual deposit this morning. I'm, I, listen, if you don't like the way I preach, I preach different every week. Everybody get an amen about that? Amen. Everybody, most guys have a flavor. Mine changes every week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the Apollo. <laughs> wow. So this morning, yeah, God's here. No. I believe God wants to relight your fire. Listen, I'm not going to lead you in a 20-minute prayer to get right and all those things. I believe everybody here is mature enough believer that you can repent before you get up here if God's convicted you of doing something. Well, listen, I will pray with you if that's what you want. That's no problem. I'm not saying I won't, but I'm just saying, if you've got something that you know it's, you've been doing ain't right, get it under the blood before you came up. Right? 